I'm a massive believer in people. I'm a massive believer in performance. So the only thing getting in the way of a new level of success for the people who are tuning in and, and listening into this is time and commitment. So if you've got the time, you've got the commitment, you will produce the results that you want. You're listening to Elevate, the official podcast of elite agent for real estate industry sales professionals, property managers, and leaders. With thanks to our partner, Connect Now, Elevate brings you the best tools, thinking, and strategies to elevate your results. To download your written action guide from this podcast containing extra tips, links, and shortcuts, visit EliteAgentElevate.com. And for more information, about how Connect Now can make moving easier on your clients, visit connectnow.com.au. Here is your host, Samantha McLean. Welcome to another episode of the Elevate podcast, where we delve into some of the most interesting minds in business and in real estate for the very best tips and strategies for you to implement to elevate your business. I'm Samantha McLean, editor of Elite Agent and host of this week's show. On today's podcast, I'm joined by real estate coach Michael Sheargold, a man we know and love for his passionate approach to transforming the results and the reputation of the real estate industry. So welcome to the show, Michael. Thanks, Sam. Great to be here. It's good to have you here and last time we virtually got together was last year actually when I took part in your 10-week Coach the Coach program and I have to say it's one of the best programs I've ever been a part of in the real estate industry and I've been a part of a lot as you know. Can you just walk our listeners through how you develop Coach the Coach and what Coach the Coach is all about? Sam, fantastic and thank you for that feedback too. It's one of my super passionate areas and I think Why I love it so much is that within the real estate profession, but this is in business overall, so often people are managing and they're not coaching for performance. I think that there should not be a title called sales manager. There should be a title called a sales coach. And effectively having coached for a couple of decades, you sort of like learn a strategy or two or pick up a strategy or two. And I was doing a lot of one-on-one helping leaders become better coaches. And I thought, well, why not package this framework and allow me to share what I do behind the scenes in a coaching session or the different styles of coaching sessions with different kinds of people to help them achieve the best possible outcome and performance. And that's alluded into those the nine coaching frames that, that I know we went through over 10 weeks. Yeah, I know it's a little bit interesting, nine frames, 10 weeks. And what that was all about is I talk about a toolkit. So a great real estate agent has a toolkit. Will they use every tool in the toolkit every single time they go to a listing appointment? I hope not. It would just be too full on. And same deal for leaders and great coaches. You need to have some really cool tools in your toolkit. And if you need them, you need to know how to get them out of the toolkit and utilize them effectively. And that's really what the design of Coach the Coach was all about. It's interesting because I remember straight off the bat that you told us all that we had to approach our employees as the same way that we would approach clients. And that was a really interesting shift in my thinking as well. Can you explain a little bit about why you take that approach and why you tell leaders straight off the bat to start thinking about their teams that way? Yeah, well, I think in the worst case scenario, here's my staff and I control my staff and they are pawns on my chessboard. If you flip it over to to team members and then ultimately clients, hang on, this is a client of mine. So how you treat your clients typically is different. Do you want any commitments with clients? Yes, of course. I would never commit cancel meeting with clients. Well, how come you're canceling meetings with team members? So, ah, interesting. And ultimately in in a real estate enterprise, as it gets bigger and, and more successful, of course, more team members are the ones doing the service delivery, the outcomes, achieving the goals for the clients. So if you can, as a leader, start to shift your thinking that, hang on, these are your clients. And the more successful you can help your clients become, the more successful you become as a leader and a business owner. So it's quite a neat shift. And then occasionally I'd say team, and then we talk clients. And as soon as you get into the mode of like, well, hang on, this client is sent for me to help them achieve a new level of performance. So how do we navigate? And I am clear, Sam, that you as a leader says, Michael, can you come in and do some work with us? There's a different listening than, well, Sam has been here all along. The more you can actually get this great coaching relationship going with your team, the better results absolutely are going to be produced in your business. Yeah, because I hear time and time again, the biggest challenge people have got in business, in real estate is people. It's the biggest challenge and it's the biggest opportunity. So absolutely, you get it right thumbs up, you get it wrong. Let me tell you, it's thumbs down. And this is that culture piece and great 
clients who've come through Coach the Coach and they've said to me, I totally get this was the missing link in how I'm actually managing my team and starting to build great relationships. So when you're starting to coach someone for the first time, there's a few do's and don'ts. If you've been around the real estate industry for long enough, you know a lot of motivational quotes and usually you're not afraid to use them, but that would be a mistake to just blanket do that as we all learned. What are some of the questions you should ask someone sitting in front of you when you want to coach them to a better result? A couple of things there. So this tuning in or this broadcasting, what coaching is really about is tuning in. And one of the distinctions in Coach the Coach is what's the difference between training and coaching? Training is my agenda. We are going to work on listing success. We're going to work on handling objections. We're going to work on how do you actually get in front of more people through better pipeline management. They're all training sessions that you're going to run. Coaching sessions, interesting enough, are not driven by my agenda. They're driven by your agenda. And I think this is one of the big mistakes a lot of the time we make. You know, I sit down with you. Uh, what are your numbers? What are you going to write this month? And what are you going to do? That's not a performance coaching session. That's like you, you managing and getting the numbers. And if you can't have a piece of tech get those numbers for you today, then I would suggest upgrading the tech in your business. This is that, that distinction of working on versus working in. And a lot of the time people go, oh, okay, working on your business versus working in your business. Yeah, well, that's true. What we're talking about is when you're having a coaching session with a team member, you're either having an in session or an on session. Now, an in session, we'll be talking about the client. We'll be talking about what's the next deal? Where are you going to with this? How do you get this deal across the line? So quite often in session, you're more in a deal support mode. How do you get this? How do you win this business? What are your numbers this month? Good to do. But the problem is occasionally someone says, oh yeah, I do a lot of coaching with my team. Actually, you do a lot of deal support with your team. On the other side, performance coaching is about them. You put your client at the center. So how are you going? How are you traveling? On a scale of one to 10, how effective have you been over the last month? If there were three things you want to improve on in the next quarter, what would those three things be that would give you a new level of performance? Okay, what support can I provide to you to make sure you follow through on those? So it's working on them. It's actually working on their business. When do you think you're going to be ready to add that extra support person? It's all about them. You know, how's your wealth creation going? What's your confidence level feeling like in terms of, of honoring this? And the thing you might remember from Coach the Coach, Sam, is the thing we do prior to that is we've got to make sure we've got an effective coaching relationship. If you don't have an effective coaching relationship as the base, as the framework, you can't build any of this stuff on top of. So if you know you and I are having a conversation, I think you and I have got amazing respect for each other. So therefore, we can have an open conversation. I can listen to what you've got to say. You can listen to what I've got to say. And we'll both hear it as a contribution. For some team members and for some leaders, there's a need to do a reset in their coaching relationship. I'll say that again, the reset. So almost like press the reset button. When you ring an IT person saying, my computer's not working. Have you spe- give you a press the reset button? You know, <laughs> control or delete. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very much the that distinction that I would play with around that. You just reminded me of one of my old sales managers. He used to get us all in a room and order those greasy sausage rolls. And then we'd call it the what you got session. So he'd go around us one by one and go, what you got, what you got, what you got, what you got. (laughs) And and it used used to drive us crazy. And now I know why. It's almost like this is not about me at all. This is just about you. Yes. Yeah. And the sausage rolls were awful too. (laughs) Just just <laughs> just saying they were supposed to be a draw card but no yeah yeah i think the other thing too is that asking for permission that was a big note that i took down because the thing is we do tend to just tell people what we know but unless you've got agreement that you are their coach then they mightn't want your advice yeah i agree and i think the other thing is sam that i might be ready to share something but if you're not ready to hear it it's not going to go well And rather than that building relationship and building the coaching, it's going to become frustrating. So that little permission frame that we speak about at Coach the Coach is is literally saying, hey, is now a good time for me to actually go through and share this? Or at next week's session, what I'd love to do is spend a bit of time looking at this aspect of the business. So you've had a heads up, you know it's coming, you're aware of this is going to occur and you can be in a more effective headspace and, and zone with it. Yeah, absolutely. When it comes to accountability, and we talked about accountability a fair bit over the 10 weeks, you've often said that people don't want it, but they need it. Yes. Explain that to us. Well, 
I think the smarter someone becomes or the smarter we think we are, we go, I don't need accountability. I can just go to the gym and do a workout. I don't need accountability. I will do my prospecting. I don't need accountability. Of course, I will do the, the nurturing. The thing that we need to be aware of is the commitment that you and I are most likely to break is one we make to ourselves. You know, I'm going to get up and go for a run every morning this week. Now, that's a great decision. Now, it'll be the follow through of that decision that will determine the result we end up producing. So all accountability is, in my eyes, is reminding you of what you're committed to. And I think a lot of the time, and I've seen people, we've got the accountability sheets. And if someone wants them, they can you know, contact me and I'm happy to send them the accountability sheets. But typical leader, guys, I've just been to this course and here's the new accountability sheet. Everyone gets it slapped down. It's a, it's a little bit like the sausage roll experience. Um, yeah. You've got to complete these sheets. They're going to be to me by 3 p.m. on a Friday, you know, like boom. So the team go, oh, okay. There's no commitment to doing it, but, but they say, I better do it because I've been asked to. They do it week one, they do it week two. They hand them back in, no feedback, no nothing, no information. And by the third week, a couple start dropping off. Fourth week, no one's doing it. And the leader feels like they've failed. Well, in actual fact, the big fail has been, hang on, I can't hold you accountable to something you're not committed to. I mean, in reality, you can hold someone accountable to something you're not committed to, but it's just not going to work. You will have to be putting, putting so much energy and so much like push and push and push. And there's no, it just doesn't serve a purpose. But if I can find out in coaching, what are you committed to? Of course I can nudge. You know, there was a, a, a client I remember in Sydney and I'd work with him for 12 months and he wrote 650 in terms of the fees. And we're talking about his goals for the next year. He said, oh, I think 750 would be a good number. And uh, his name was Matt. And I said, look, Matt, with the greatest respect, you're going to go screaming past 750 with everything we put in place in this first year of coaching. If the number was more like, and I said the mill number, and he went like this, he'd never seen it there. Uh, that would be more exciting for, I think, us to work towards. And it was that interesting kind of mode of stretching someone's thinking. Now, stretching is different than uh, along those lines. Anyway, we came back and we agreed that 800 would be a good number. But we said after the first quarter, if he was on track, he'd upgrade. Of course, he did over the mill because it was that stretch. I'll quite often ask a business owner, let's say they've owned up until this point in time, they've written, say, 150000 in terms of fees for the month. And so well, when's your first 200000 a month going to be? It's like, I haven't thought about it. Well, now that you are, when's it going to be? And then, you know, someone's writing... Half a million. Okay, well, when's your first $750,000 a month going to be? Or when's your first million dollar month going to be? And all of a sudden, it's got this ability to stretch possibility. In coaching, I call that nudging. You're just nudging performance just a little bit. Yeah, and it's amazing how much the little things can make such a difference. Absolutely. This is why you use the example of the world's fastest runner still needs a coach. Absolutely. The world's fastest runner's coach is not as fast at running as the actual runner. Usain Bolt, have you seen his coach? Not exactly going to set the Olympic record, but has the ability to see different distinctions. And I think this is one of the reasons why in real estate, in fact, I had this conversation with a client yesterday and she said to me, Michael, I think one of the reasons why you're so good at coaching real estate is that you haven't been an agent or you haven't been a principal. I said, oh, okay, that's interesting. I've got that belief very much so. And she said, look, with you, I always get this perspective from a client point of view. How's this dialogue going to land from a client point of view? How's this strategy going to appeal for, to a client? Because ultimately, everything that a business does, everything that your you know, agents do, it has to work from a client's perspective. So how is this going to land? And supporting, thinking more about the client experience and the client outcomes, uh, so critically important to success. Yeah, it's interesting because if I could be a little bit transparent for a while, I was applying what I was learning from you into our business, which is not a real estate business, obviously, like we're close to the real estate industry. And it was very helpful from the point of view that I think some of these lessons that you're giving are universal. So if anyone's listening who's not in real estate, it's actually, the, these are universal lessons. And I want to talk a little bit about, because I had someone behaving quite badly during the time that we were in Coach the Coach. And I asked you a, a directive question, which was very helpful to me and might be helpful to some of the listeners out there. But what do you do if someone is behaving badly? How do you get them back on track? 
Yeah, there's obviously some context around it. Is it a one-off? Is it a pattern that has existed for a while? And I think in your case, we identified it was, it was a pattern that had occurred. So given it was a pattern, clearly the way I've been coaching that person is not getting the outcome. So there's one or two outcomes. Either this person has been sent to me to improve my coaching skills, to improve my leadership skills. And by the way, your most difficult people will always give you some leadership lessons. So if you look at them as hey, these, these people are giving me some leadership lessons, then that's great. And in saying that, some people get ambition and capability confused. A lot of the time, and uh, little Miss Frankie now is, is six year old, years old. And one of the things that we learned very early is to avoid saying to little kids, you're smart, you're intelligent, you're so amazing and all these sorts of things. Because we've got a generation coming out into the workplace who think they're smart, they're legends. And like, hang on, I got a great score at school. How come I'm not the CEO? So there's, there's, there's that really interesting kind of gap there. Well, there's just a little bit to do with this. There's, there's a bridge here. And what we learned very early is to say, you put a lot of effort in to get that result. Gee, you really worked hard to do that. It just shows what you, by really focusing in on this, what you can actually achieve. So it's so subtle if you look at that as a difference, but hopefully, you know, over time, what she's learning is that it's the energy and it's the effort I'm putting in to get this result rather than I'm just smart. I'm smart. How come I'm not the CEO yet? And I think in that situation, let's bring it back to the coaching for, for you. I love a 30 day plan. So, okay, let's agree. This is not working on a scale of one to 10. How effective do you think you're being in your current role? Uh, oh, I'm, I'm an eight out of 10. That's interesting. I was thinking it's more a three out of 10. So we've got a little bit of a gap between how you are perceiving and how I'm perceiving. That's the first thing. So you've got to get that sort of benchmark of reality that can kick in. So let's do a 30 day plan. And what's going to happen in the next 30 days, at the end of 30 days, you'll know and I'll know whether you've stepped up to the plate or if it's time to step out and find yourself something that you can apply your skills to that is even more effective for you than where you're currently sitting. Occasionally, it'll even be that mode of, look, why don't you uh, think about this overnight, come back to me tomorrow with your 30 day plan as to what you're going to do in the next 30 days to turn this around. By the way, I would be certainly looking at this, this and this, maybe give them three pieces of direction, or maybe give them no direction to see if they come back. I remember with a, a team member, this is years ago, I asked something similar, similar dynamic, asked her to, to do a plan. And clearly she grabbed a piece of paper and wrote it at the traffic lights in the car on the way in. And immediately that shows commitment. Immediately that shows, well, hang on a tick. We are a professional business. We are a business that is out to help our clients produce remarkable results. And this is the plan let's agree that probably this is not the role for you. And almost always the leader will notice that faster than what the team member will, because when you're in doing it, you don't actually necessarily see what's happening. And it's good to call. By the way, the other thing is, I think in a business, everyone in the business knows this person is not pulling their weight. This person is dragging the, the chain or having a, a, an impact on the overall business. And some people compensate for them and so on. But ultimately, we look like weak leaders if we're allowing that to go through as opposed to let's address it. Now, I don't believe in a public slaying that rarely is going to produce the right result, but certainly avoid letting it go. So, you know, one of the things that, that we do with our coaching clients is, okay, what cleanups need to happen this month? And I'm very happy if there's no cleanups, but if we haven't shone the torch and looked at cleanups, we can be missing things and, and they can start to build and they become very ineffective for the culture. And I think another cultural aspect and something that I certainly wrote down and took to heart and have been trying to practice myself is that idea of build the person but change the behaviour or build the person and focus on the behaviour. Yes. So do you mind just taking us a little bit more through that? Yeah, yeah, sure. So if we separate those two, person, you're great, this behaviour doesn't work for us. So you get this into this mode of like, you want to build this person. Why? Because if we start to destroy the, the person, let me tell you, they're going to take less risks. They're going to live in fear. They're not going to do the things they need to do. Because 
in the business, you've got to be bold. You've got to get out. You've got to make calls. You've got to do things. You've got to meet people you don't know. You've got to put yourself out in front of us in those situations. So if someone's in a fear space, that's not going to be effective. So build a person. You're great. This behavior doesn't work. So another way of saying it from a negotiation point of view is hard on the issue, soft on the people. So we want to make sure that we're hard on the issue. This isn't the result that you would be happy with and certainly we're not happy with. Now, you're great. You know, I totally believe in you. I, I'm backing you 500%. This behavior is not ideal. This uh, result or this response time to emails, this uh, delivery to clients, this tardiness around time doesn't work. And you can almost see I'm, I'm making the distinction between you're great, this is it. The other thing that can happen too, Sam, is that occasionally I'll have a leader saying, oh yeah, I'm consistent with everyone in my team. I'm really consistent. I'm super consistent. So, okay, that's interesting. So here they are, they speak with the first person. Oh, hi, how are you going? Yeah, yeah, that's great. What do you want? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What do you want? Uh-huh. Like, and, and they think they're being consistent. They're being massively inconsistent. And they're watching out having favorites and the team knowing you've got favorites because all of a sudden the culture will become part of that and it doesn't serve a purpose or it doesn't serve a good purpose, I should say. I think some of the conversations that we've been having for the last 20 minutes or so actually highlight how tough it is to be a leader. If you're a leader listening to this, what are your thoughts in 2021 of what it's going to take to be successful as a leader and really pull your team together after what's been a you know, ridiculously tough year? The first big question is, do you as a leader have clarity? And we cover this in Coach the Coach, and that is a confused mind stalls. So we've got to move from confusion to clarity. So if you as a leader are not clear on where you're going, and you should be able to, early in the year, literally go to the team and say, here's where we're heading. This is what I'm excited about. This is what our initiative is. This is what we're up to achieving. And the ultimate goal from a, a leadership point of view, I should be able to see my vision within your vision. So in other words, we get this sort of like connection and this coming together. So by me being part of the team, I can advance my vision. And by the way, I'm also going to help you advance your vision. So that's super, super important. So let's assume a couple of things. The brand's great. The model works. In other words, uh, the more volume that we transact, we actually make money out of it. And that's a very important thing. That we've got the base level of tech to deliver the result and to, uh, and to support. And we're either have got the team or we've got the ability to recruit the team to come on board to make it happen. So if you've got those elements in play, it's going to be the leadership impact that we bring on top of that that will, will have a huge momentum. And I say to leaders, if you're feeling like a bit of a grumpy bum for the day, then stay in the car, do not walk into the office, do not go in and, and use negativity in, around the place. Stay in the car, turn Akadaka up really loud. You shook me all night long. Do some headbanging kind of stuff. Get it out of your system and walk in with a growth mindset that you're looking for possibility. And the other thing is, Sam, I see this all the time. Someone walks in and says, good morning, how are you? And keeps walking. Do not ask, how are you, unless you're willing to stop and actually have a conversation. It's so basic and so obvious. I get it. Like sometimes people can get so busy, but this is where I think there was such value in Coach the Coach because it certainly made me stop and think about a few things myself. So I have to ask you, are you doing it again this year? I think given the success of, this is the first time we did it online last year. So up until then, it had been a two-day workshop, fairly intense over two days. So this was an experiment last year to see, well, what happens if we break it up over these weeks and start to, to allow that to occur? So we had amazing success with it. And, and some clients who did the two-day workshop decided as a graduate to come back and do it again. And hopefully, Sam will come back and do Coach to Coach again. There's a lot in it. The feedback has been outstanding as to allowing people to do it at a, a different pace. It also meant we had you know, people globally come and do Coach the Coach that would never have been able to get to Sydney or get to Melbourne to do it. So I think the answer is definitely yes. And we're really uh, embracing our online, our strategy in terms of, of programs and support to help the profession, help great real estate professionals become exceptional real estate professionals. 
I met quite a, a few people on there, actually, people from America and the UK, and it was amazing, amazing 10 weeks. So that's really cool. So we'll let everyone know when the next Coach the Coach is coming up, but you've got a few things coming up in February as well. Yeah, we do, actually. So uh, the first one we've got coming up is Agent Bootcamp. Now, that's a really good example. That was a two-day workshop that we've now reinvented into an eight-week online program. So over eight Fridays, there's an hour of learning, then a half-hour Q&A directly with me, literally going through. So what's happening for you? What are you working on? And so on. So I'm really excited about that because if we look at the top 200 agents within Australia about 50% of them have come through that bootcamp process. So it's a very, very proven and successful framework for success. And I often look at it that if you've got the right framework, you can build the structure that you want. If you don't have the right framework, it's going to be really, really tough. So sure, you know, here's a piece of dialogue, but we literally walk through what are the strategies, what are the skills, what's the dialogue and what's the mindset you need to capitalize on and, you know, outlist and outsell the competition. So that's Agent Bootcamp online for eight weeks and then the other is a program called leaders summit 2021 and once again sam it's pretty obvious we're not running any physical events at the moment so we flipped this into a seven speakers over one day and that's on the 15th of feb and that 15th of feb is real intensity around setting up for a brilliant 2021. So I think the other thing I'd say for a, a leader to, to do this year is get to Leader Summit because I think we're going to hear from an amazing array of real estate professionals, practitioners who are doing great things. The other person I'm, I'm really excited about is we've got the All Blacks coach speaking there as well. So in a sort of a Q&A style, starting to uncover what's the secrets of the All Blacks. And we know as a team, they're just extraordinary as to what they've produced over a long period of time. And that's going to be a, an awesome kind of component. That would be awesome. You might find me at that one too, because <laughs> I love that whole all black thing. No one's bigger than the jersey and the harker and redhead, blue head. There's so much to take away from the all blacks that into any business, I think. Well, I hope that everyone has enjoyed these few tips from Coach the Coach, because you've been very generous as always with your knowledge this morning, Michael, and thank you so much for that. Are there any last words of advice or anything that you'd like people to specifically remember as a result of listening to this podcast? Sam, I'm a massive believer in people. I'm a massive believer in performance. So the only thing getting in the way of a new level of success for the people who are tuning in and, and listening into this is time and commitment. So if you've got the time, you've got the commitment, you will produce the results that you want. And be okay to stretch yourself a little bit. Be okay to put yourself into an environment that's going to see a better version of you. And the ultimate thing that I know is that better people make for better real estate professionals. So the more you can focus on being a better human being, I guarantee it's going to come out in bucket loads and in, in absolute spades about you becoming an absolute better real estate professional. Yeah, I remember a quote of yours, don't just make a dollar, make a difference. Yeah. Good slogan for 2021. It is. Michael Sheargold, thank you so much. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Elevate with thanks to connectnow.com.au. Don't forget to download your written action guide from this podcast containing extra tips, links and shortcuts. Visit eliteagentelevate.com.